Joining me on the show tonight, Shashi Thiru, Lok Sabha MP from the Congress and of course a keen tweeter on the net. Also joining me, Soli Sorabji, former Attorney General of India. Shekhar Kapoor, film director and producer. Ken Ghosh, film director as well again. All of them active uh, online users. I'm also joined by Sunil Abraham, executive director of the Center for Internet and Society. Dr. Shashi Tharoor, if I may begin with you, because the middle path you took on uh, Twitter already got you a firestorm of protest, as you put it. Do you think there's been a whole degree of confusion over the so-called plans of Kapil Sibyl to censor the internet? How do you actually see the current controversy? Well, I think that uh, there's a certain amount of uh, liberal fundamentalism out there on the internet space by highly educated people, very sophisticated people, who don't want anybody, least of all a government, telling them what they can or cannot read, write, see and think. And frankly, I used to be one of them myself, so I don't uh, uh, feel any surprise about the fact that there are people who say that absolutely our freedom is absolute and cannot be circumscribed. Mm -hmm. But from the point of view of a government, there is a certain responsibility to the society of the state of which you are a government. And in India, sadly, there are certain kinds of realities, uh, political sensitivities, cultural sensitivities, that are different from those that exist in the developed Western world. It's not to say that we are less uh, developed or less mature, we are just different. And the fact is that um, cultural difference is something we cannot deny just as it is commonplace mm -hmm. for a woman to take off her bikini top on the beaches of Saint-Tropez or Bondi or Copacabana. But if you did it in Goa or Dubai or Karachi, you'll get arrested or assaulted. Similarly, in different societies, there are different attitudes to what is considered permissible. Uh, and it's not just, by the way, developing versus developed. If you look at uh, the United States, uh, yes. you can't talk about black Americans using the N-word. Uh, it is simply not done. It's not that there is a law against it. It is simply that it is not done, it is not considered acceptable in the society, it's considered deeply offensive. Of course, Now, in our society, there are some things that are considered deeply offensive to certain religious groups, and we have to bear that in mind. No, but uh, Shashi Tharoor, I thought uh, the wonders and the dangers of the internet was that it actually wasn't society-specific, or didn't cater society-specific, because you mentioned America, but of course, the N-word will be used on the internet freely as well. Let me bring in Mr. Soli Sorabji on the point you made of liberal fundamentalism. And the argument that has been made by others, like Omar Abdullah, that when you talk about the freedom of expression, what about the responsibility that must come with it? Mr. Surabji, your views on the current debate and what Shashi Tharoor just said. Um, well, let's be very clear. No one claims as absolute any fundamental right, including freedom of expression, is an absolute right. No one claims it and can't claim it. Our constitution itself has provided the heads of restrictions which can be placed on freedom of expression. For example, incitement to violence, sovereignty, integrity of the country, friendly relations with foreign people, obscenity, contempt of court, and so on. And not in the general interest of the public. These restricted heads are only confined to freedom of expression. Yes. They are not wide as regards other freedom. Therefore, when you say that anyone asks for absolute freedom, there is no fundamentalism at all, but what we object to, at least what I object to, this seems to be supervision, government supervision of ideas that man can express. They may be unconventional. They may be disparaging to the government. So long as they are not within the prescribed limits of the Constitution, I think there should be, there cannot be any prohibition. One thing more. Anything, when you say about religious feelings, yes, if it is such that it may incite lead to violence, I can understand mm -hmm. that. But otherwise, where do you end? One man's lyric is another's obscenity. This is such a subjective field in the field of art. NDTV's cricket app, Android and iPhone, faster scorecard, special analysis, and much more. Download free NDTV.com/apps.